Welcome guys, gals, and pals. My name is Brooke, and this is Brooke Beams Big, where I share my expressions of joy. job interview this morning so I put on makeup so I thought I would take advantage of that for the opening clip of this vlog so this is week three of my romances by black authors reading vlog series and we are still in the middle of a princess in theory by Alyssa Cole I'm on page 274 so I'm getting really close to the end this is the first book in the Reluctant Royal series. There are two more books in this series and I did manage to find physical copies of them at a neighboring library system that I can check books out from through a reciprocal program. So I put those on hold at the library location close to me so I'm hopefully going to be getting a notice tomorrow that they're ready to pick up and I will take you guys with me to go get those. There are also two novellas in this series and my library does have access to both e- and audiobook versions of them and I do occasionally read on my phone so I might check those out as well. So plans for today, I'm about to take this makeup off and I might take a little nap but then when I get up I need to finish editing last week's vlog. It's about half done so I need to finish it so I can upload it hopefully today. That's the goal. Tuesdays is the goal. That's my big goal for today. And then hopefully tonight when I have time to sit down and read, I will knock out the last little bit of this and we can be done and I can tell you what I thought about the ending. Wednesday, March 1st, I will give y'all an update on A Princess in Theory in a little bit. I am this close to being finished. I couldn't quite keep my eyes open long enough last night to get through it. But I got an Amazon package, so I thought I would do another unboxing with y'all. I actually have two because they did that thing where you place one order and it comes in two shipments so let me just get these open I I ordered some planner supplies and a couple of things for my room that I'm excited about first I have some correction tape these are Tombow brand I ran out a little while ago although they last forever. My boyfriend got me this same two-pack for my birthday last year and they lasted me almost until my birthday this year. Like, it lasts a year. But I use a lot of this in my planner and it's been driving me crazy not to have it so I'm really happy to get some more. Then I picked up two Uniball Signos in white. If you just want to erase a line and you don't want the broader correction tape line, I've heard that these are really good for that, so I got some to try for myself. Then I got some Tombow glue tape refills. The tape runner that I use is refillable. I still have some left, but I'm probably going to run out soon, and I'm going to be mad when I run out in the middle of gluing something down, so I went ahead and picked up some more refills. Then again, I picked up something new. I picked up these Zig two-way glue pins which I've heard are also really great. I picked up a pack with three different sizes of tips and it's supposed to be like if you put it down and you put something down, it's a permanent stick, but if you let it dry a little bit and get more tacky, it becomes more removable. So it's easier if you make a mistake to peel it back up, which is really great for paper planning. And it's great for getting into smaller spaces that your tape runner isn't great at. Then 
then I picked up a clear acrylic ruler. I don't own a ruler and having a clear one is also great for paper planning because you can use it and still see through it. I was worried this would be super flexible and it is a little but not too bad although it may be different outside of the packaging but I don't think there's cardboard in here. So this will do fine. It was only like a dollar and some cents so I figured it was worth the risk. And then I picked up a set of craft tweezers. These are great for putting down small stickers and getting your fingers out of the way. I have been using just my regular like beauty tweezers, but I picked up this set of two that are longer and like more made for crafting. So I'm excited to try these out. Then for my room, I picked up these HDMI right angle adapters because up here you can see a cord for it. I have a projector that my partner got me for Christmas and I'm very excited to use it, but the shelf that I have that it sits on is not wide enough for me to stick the HDMI cable in the back because I stick the HDMI cable in, it like, you know, has that stiff part at the beginning that sticks out farther. So then the projector is not sitting on the shelf all the way, which isn't great for the projector. So I got these so that I can like angle the cord differently. So I'm excited to get that set up. And then this is the most exciting thing. I got a squishmallow net. <laughs> you may have noticed that I sit in front of some of my squishmallows when I film down here in this corner of my room. But my squishmallow collection is getting too big for this little section and these baskets I have over here. So I bought this net to hang above my bed. My partner is going to help me hang it up tomorrow and I think I might make a little video out of that of us hanging it up, installing it, and then me filling it with the squishmallows I want to put in it. So watch out for that soon if you are into squishmallow content. But that's all I have for right now. Like I said, I'm gonna go finish the last little bit of A Princess in Theory and my library holds are ready. So I'm gonna see if I can get over to that library today to pick them up so I'm ready to go with the next one. So I'll see y'all soon. bit of a princess in theory this was a good solid read i do think i preferred talia hibbert's books more but that's just a personal preference that comes down to writing style and story structure in a way this book definitely had a lot more going on in the background than just the romance or someone's personal journey and i did like that but it gives it a different feel i could definitely see how Alyssa cole has recently started writing thrillers, I think that she would be great at it. I also know that I enjoyed this because I did go pick up the next two books in the series, which are A Duke by Default and A Prince on Paper. This one looks a little different because the library only had a large print edition of this book, and sometimes the covers for the large prints can be different because they go through like different publishers. I've never read a book in a large print edition so I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about that. It may be annoying to me or it may feel real nice because I might zip through the pages faster. But I'm also really excited because I didn't know this while I was reading A Princess in Theory but all of the main female characters for the rest of the books in the series including the two novellas are characters that were introduced to in this book. Some of them for longer periods of time than others but I'm very hyped about that. I did mention in my last clip that I was really interested in Naledi's friendship with Portia and Portia is the heroine of our next book and I'm hyped about that. So I think you can tell that I grew to care. <laughs> so I think the rest of my plans for tonight are planner decorating. <laughs> I may start a duke by default but I probably won't have an update about that until tomorrow. So without really updating, 
but my last few days have been kind of busy with some room improvement projects, some job hunting things, and honestly just like general beginning of period achiness, keeping it real with y'all, but I did manage to finish a duke by default. So I wanted to get on here and talk about it with y'all before I close out this vlog. Like I said, before I started this book, I was really excited that we were going to be focusing on Portia. Portia had a decent appearance in A Princess in Theory. We could definitely tell she was going through some stuff. She needed to get herself together. And I'm glad that we got a whole book where we really got to see that happen for her. I did get some Eve Brown vibes for sure. I say that because I read Act Your Age Eve Brown first. This book was published before Act Your Age Eve Brown, but I say that it has some vibes because Portia definitely has that thing that Eve has where she's tried a bunch of things and she doesn't always follow through with them after she tries them out and she considers them failures. And there is also the element of learning about neurodivergence in here, whereas Eve is discovering her autism, Portia is discovering that she may have ADHD and working through that. So in this book we follow Portia as she goes on her latest endeavor which is learning how to make swords. Honestly I loved that so much. Number one, I just love how much Portia is into the arts and how she tries a lot of things. That is a point of contention with her family and herself that she can't seem to settle on something, but I think it's really great that she gets so interested in all these different really cool things and then just goes for it. The sword making was definitely really cool to learn about. And I like that high interest. I like when someone's excited about something and we really get to see the passion for sword making from Tav and Portia's own passion in, new, in learning how to do new things. Now the sword making apprenticeship does add some conflict to the relationship at the center of this romance because Tavish McKenzie, who is the love interest, is Portia's teacher. He's her boss in a way. She is working under him to learn how to make swords. And so of course that complicates the relationship that adds a certain power dynamic that can be problematic if not done well. But I think Alyssa Cole did a really good job of really analyzing that kind of relationship because life happens, people who work in close proximity do fall in love, do form close relationships, may be attracted to each other, but you have to really look at that power dynamic, be willing to face it and see what it's doing to your relationship and how if you're gonna have a healthy relationship do you navigate that. Maybe you have to completely separate those things, like you can't stay under someone while you're trying to be equal with them in a partnership. And I really appreciated that she looked the issue head on and didn't just kind of gloss over it just because this is supposed to be a fun romance. I did also enjoy that we got a broader look at the characters and relationships of this world. This series is a series of companion novels and novellas where all of the characters kind of show up in all of the books. So. It was great to see more of that, to see that friendship really forming between Naledi, Portia, and Naya, who is Naledi's cousin there, and the protagonist of the next full novel. So it's great to get to see that bond really form between them. It was also great that we got to see more of Portia's sister Reggie, who is one of the protagonists of one of the novellas. She appeared in the previous book, but very, very briefly, and here we got to really look at her and Portia's relationship as sisters. I'm enjoying that universal world building of characters. <laughs> Speaking of protagonists for other novellas and novels, I am going to continue this series, so I am going to vlog for one more week. I checked out both of the novellas from Hoopla, so I'm just going to read them digitally. They're both about half the length of one of the full novels, and I've been reading about two books a week, so I think I should be able to knock out both novellas and the third book in the series next week and really wrap this reading adventure up nicely. But before we move on, close this one out so we can start something new, I do want to show you guys some things. So today I went to my local 5 below 
because it was Squish Mellow Drop Day and they had the new Easter Squish Mellows in like a tiny size and I wanted to check out what my Five Below had and I picked up some stuff. When it came to this year's Easter springtime Squish Mellow Squad, I was really enjoying all the floral patterns. I really like flowers and florals, but none of them were sticking out to me so much that I wanted like a big size. I wanted to pay a lot for them. So I was really excited that Five Below had these same designs in like a smaller, more affordable format. So I picked up all of the flower ones that they had. So we have Amy the chick and if you can see her, she's got the floral print on her belly. So cute. Then we have Fritz the frog, Peter the pig, Delzy the donkey, and Elia the lamb. I'm really enjoying that these are all like pastel and that they're like really simple colors. I think that's so cute. And then I did pick up a couple of new squish for my sister. She collects the cows one. She collects the cow ones. So I have Griella and Ivor. She's got like the paint splotches on her tummy and this is just like a Highland cow. If you are interested in squish mellows or squish mellow content at all, today is March 5th when I'm filming this, but you won't be seeing it then. But on Tuesday, March 7th, it is Squishmallow Day, so I am posting a Squishmallow haul of all of the Squishmallows I've gotten in the last few months. So go check that out because I will be posting this one after that one. So I will link it up in the cards for you. Then there's a Dollar Tree close to my five below. I stopped in there to buy a couple more baskets. If you see these, I hung these up today and all it is is these baskets from Dollar Tree hanging on a command hook and I wanted a few more to hang over, you can't see it, but over here on my nightstand. So I stopped into the Dollar Tree to pick those up. But while I was in there, I happened to walk down the book aisle when I was like coming up from the back of the store where the baskets are and these DC Super Friends board books caught my eyes and so I looked through them and I picked this one up that's called Superheroes in Action because Harley is in it and she's so adorable. It's a very basic board book. It's like six pages but I couldn't pass it up. This is so cute and I'm so excited that I got this for only like a dollar twenty-five because the dollar store ain't really the dollar store anymore. Then I went to Michael's, which I'd already been planning to do before I even saw that it was Squishmallow Drop Day because I wanted to pick up a couple of planner items that I didn't get during my Amazon haul. So first I have this cart roll holder. It snaps onto a three-tiered cart, which is something that I use to organize my planner supplies. So I got this to put wax paper onto because wax paper is great if you're a sticker user because you can stick stickers on here and then peel them back off again just like you would um, sticker backing and that's great when you're flipping through sticker books and wanting to pull certain stickers you don't have to keep flipping to find things. So I got this to put on the front of my cart so I can put the, the wax paper there. And then I picked up a new X-Acto knife. I've been debating picking one of these up for a while now because the current X-Acto knife I have, something happened to the cap. It got like stretched out or something. It doesn't stay on, which isn't great safety wise. I do like that one because it was like a limited edition color. It, it's like a light pink, which is my favorite color. So I've been debating buying a new one just for the safety cap, but then also somehow now I have lost my X-Acto knife. I don't know how that happened. I had it in a backpack that I took to my boyfriend's house and then I remember getting it out to use it and now I can't find it. So I just went ahead and picked up a new one. If I find the other one somewhere, I may just take the cap off of this one to put on that handle just because I like the color on that one. But anyway, I picked up one of those. And then I picked up a bone folder because I subscribe to another YouTuber, EJ Joyful Plans, Elizabeth. 
She is a planning YouTuber and she uses this tool to flatten out clear stickers to get the air out from underneath so they look better on the page. I've tried to use a couple of other items to do that, but that sometimes they like scratch the page or something. I don't know. But this one seems because it's made to be rubbed across paper that it does a good job for her and she doesn't have problems. So I picked it up to try it out. Additionally, while I was at Michael's, I picked up these greenery strands right here that you can see behind me. They're having a sale on the spring collection, 40% off. So I made sure to pick some out from there. So I got each one of these for like $9, which is actually, if you don't know, because you don't buy greenery, a great deal because brand new, the strands, depending on the designs, can range from like $15 to $25. Them hoes expensive. So $9 a piece, I was very happy and excited. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I have a lights curtain here. So I just hung them in between the strands of lights and I love it so much. It goes so great with my bedspread. It kind of just looks like a continuation. I'm, I'm loving my room right now, you guys. I have a couple videos coming up that shows number one, how I put my comic wall together, which is over here, you can't see. And then number two, reorganizing all my squishmallows. Mm, I'm so excited to show it to you guys. But speaking of comic walls, the last thing I have to show you is I wanna open the comics that I received this week with you guys. Um, comics come out on Tuesdays, at least DC Comics do. I think every other comic comes out on Wednesday. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. But I currently have mine mailed to me from Midtown Comics in New York because when I moved to this area, there wasn't a comic book shop close enough for me to drive to every week. There now is, and I need to change my subscriptions to them, and I have just been lazy and not done it. But all that is to say that even though they come out Tuesday, Wednesday, I usually don't get them until Friday, Saturday, Monday sometimes, because it's mailed to me. So, and let me tell y'all, if y'all are book people and not comic people, and you don't know this, comic book people take packaging real, real serious. Like, they ain't letting that ish get bent and honestly i think book people could uh, book packing people could take some lessons from it but. okay so first i have the most recent issue of dc connect if you don't know this is just like a little preview magazine that tells you the comics that are going to be coming out in three months so you can go ahead and order them because pre-orders are really important with comics then I have Harley Quinn number 27 in the main cover and the variant cover. I get all the Harley covers, at least the A and the B. Usually I get any incentives too. Right now your girl's a little short on money, so we waiting on that. And then I picked up Batman the Auto Adventures number 5. This is a series I'm subscribed to because I love this podcast. If you have HBO Max, this is a great podcast. It's very like old school radio show vibes. Harley is in it, <laughs> which is why I checked it out in the first place, but I'm excited to read the comics that go along with it. That was everything I wanted to show you. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Like this video if I made you smile, and if you're up to it, comment something that made you happy today, yesterday, or even just this week. I would love to celebrate it with you. That's the end, friends. Sending you off with love. Goodbye.